This video is about the use and abuse of cocaine and its toxicity. We're going to start by talking about the history and the mechanism of cocaine, how it works, what it does, what the effects are on the body, and then what the complications of cocaine use are. We're going to then end the video by talking about how to manage those complications so that you'll feel confident dealing with a presentation related to cocaine when you're working in hospital. I'll put all the sources I use to make this video in the description below so you've got all the references that I used. Cocaine has a lot of names. It's commonly known as Coke, Charlie, Blow, Snow, even Chang. Uh, it's usually used as a powder and it's snorted, but it can also be formed into crack, which is a kind of crystal substance, and that's usually smoked. It comes from the coca plant, which is endemic to South America, and it looks like this when it's in its powder form. It's just a plain white powder that people snort. When it's crack, it looks like these rocks, and that's why it's called crack cocaine. And it's been used for thousands of years. So the ancient people in South America used to use cocaine um, going back for millennia. It was first discovered by Europeans when the Spanish invaded South America just prior to 1500. And it was first brought to Europe by this guy called Mariani who made something called Mariani wine, which was a coca wine. So it was wine that had cocaine in it. It was used as the first anesthetic in 1884 and achieved widespread popularity in Europe, even being endorsed by one of the popes, Pope Leo XIII. The famous drink Coca-Cola used to have small amounts of cocaine in it. This goes back to the original recipe for Coca-Cola, which has always been a trade secret. The modern formulation does not have cocaine in it. There's a company called Stepan in Illinois in America, and they import 100 tons of coca plant a year from Peru, and they purify it and make it into medical cocaine and sell it to a drug company. Some of the leftover coca plant still gets turned into a flavoring that's used in Coca-Cola, but it doesn't have any narcotic properties anymore. It used to be sold in pharmacies, cocaine, and up until about 1916 when it was made illegal in America. And one of the pharmaceutical companies said that cocaine could make the coward brave, the silent eloquent, and render the sufferer insensitive to pain. That was Park Davis. Sigmund Freud famously used cocaine. He used it himself, and he gave it to some of his patients to basically see what would happen. The mechanism of cocaine has two main facets. One is that it causes sodium channel blockade, and this is responsible for its local anaesthetic effects and also for the effects on the QRS complex in the ECG. The second is that it inhibits the reuptake of monoamines, and monoamines are mainly dopamine, noradrenaline, and serotonin. These are responsible for a lot of the other effects, the autonomic effects, the cardiac effects, and the psychological effects that cocaine has. What are those effects? Well, we're going to break it down into these categories, autonomic, central nervous system, cardiovascular, and then the other effects. We'll talk about the only autonomic effect first, which is hyperthermia. I shouldn't say only, I mean the main autonomic effect. So they get significant hyperthermia. In terms of uh, central nervous system effects, there's quite a few of them. We can get excitation, we can be aggressive, people get a headache, people can have strokes, people get seizures, and people also get dystonia, so abnormal movements. The cardiovascular uh, system has even more effects from cocaine. This can start with a simple chest pain that may be due to coronary vasospasm. This can progress all the way up into an acute coronary syndrome, so people can get a myocardial infarction from cocaine. You can get a cardiomyopathy. This is most commonly seen in long-term users of cocaine, but can happen after only one or two uses. You get a broadening of the QRS complex, and that predisposes people to arrhythmias, including ventricular tachycardia. People get a tachyarrhythmia, which might be VT, but could also be AF or a supraventricular tachycardia. You get prolongation of the QT interval. This is probably mediated through the effects on potassium channels, as well as the, the known effects on sodium channels that cocaine has. And this, again, predisposes you to arrhythmias. People can get aortic dissection, they can get all sorts of aortic syndromes from cocaine use, but dissection is one of the ones that people know about the most and it's life-threatening. Cocaine causes thrombosis through three main mechanisms. One is that it causes platelet aggregation, two is that it causes changes to the endothelium, and three is that it causes vasospasm. So this can cause a complication of any vascular bed. This picture obviously shows a deep vein thrombosis of the leg. 
And finally, coming on to the other category of effects, we got pneumothorax. This is mainly caused by barotrauma when doing a Valsalva if people are smoking crack. And we also get rhabdomyolysis, so they get muscle breakdown from the stimulatory effects of cocaine. People get effects from the things that cocaine is commonly cut with. So one of those things is local anaesthetic. So you get toxicity from too much local anaesthetic. And the other thing is this drug called levasimol, which is an anti-helminthic used mainly in cattle. So it's a veterinary medicine now. It causes these nasty complications like agranulocytosis, the lack of development of the, of the blood cells, and... Uh, vasculitis as well and the reason it's cut with levasimol is that levasimol has some kind of stimulant effects and also has some local anaesthetic effects so it mimics some of the effects of cocaine and is commonly used to pad out the pure drug now that's pretty much all the main effects you need to know about cocaine the other thing you need to know is that when you combine it with alcohol you get this thing called cocaethylene and cocaethylene is more potent and longer lasting than cocaine on its own but also is more prone to cause arrhythmias and therefore is more dangerous than either cocaine or alcohol on them on their own the common contaminants that cocaine is mixed with, apart from the levasimol that I mentioned before, so we've got local anaesthetics, that clearly is going to be more convincing if you give someone something that numbs their nose when they snort it, they're more likely to believe that it's cocaine. And then the other padding out agents, so bulking agents like sugar, talc, cornstarch, really anything that looks like a white powder, even glass sometimes. What are the goals of treatment with cocaine toxicity? Well, firstly, you want to get rapid control of agitation, and that means using benzodiazepines. You can also use antipsychotics like droperidol, but benzodiazepines are used for several of the other complications of cocaine and therefore are preferable. You might need to use larger doses of benzodiazepines than you would otherwise use, and that's because you get this huge surge of catecholamines that you need to try and get on top of. You need to aggressively get on top of uh, hyperthermia as well. So if someone is overheating, you need to try and bring down their temperature. The mainstay of treatment for hyperthermia is cooled IV fluids. So they get some IV fluids, it runs through a fluid cooler, and then it goes into their vein and cools their body temperature down. You can also use external cooling. So you could use ice packs in the axilla and groin. And if their temperature is rising a lot, you need to think about intubation and paralysis to decrease the uh, temperature to uh, de decrease the heat produced by the muscles now when I say if their temperature is getting very high a threshold would be 40 or 41 degrees you really need to start thinking about intubation once they get to that kind of temperature You've got to treat any cardiovascular complications of cocaine. So in particular, if they've got an AM AMI, then you're going to have to give them aspirin and you're going to have to give them nitrates, as well as giving them analgesia to deal with the pain. You want to avoid beta blockers. And the reason for this is that when you block only the beta adrenal receptors, you get unopposed action at the alpha adrenal receptors from cocaine. And this can cause a significant hypertension that is very difficult to get on top of if you've given a beta blocker because of this. If someone goes into VT, remember it's often likely due to that sodium channel blockade and therefore the treatment will involve giving them sodium bicarbonate. If someone has cardiovascular collapse, you want, and by that I mean hypotension leading to shock, then you want to try and increase their blood pressure to maintain perfusion and that means using a vasopressor like noradrenaline. Treat seizures with benzodiazepines, just as you would any other seizure. You're going to have to give even bigger doses of benzodiazepines. And really, at this point, you may end up having to intubate them if you've given them a very large dose of benzos. But you want to get on top of the seizure in any case. What are the criteria for admission with cocaine toxicity? Well, there are two main things. One is ongoing chest pain. If someone has chest pain, they need to stay in. They can't go home until their chest pain has resolved. Second thing is any signs of end organ damage warrants admission for further investigation and observation. So if they've got evidence of damage to their heart, their lungs, their brain, or their metabolic system, they need to stay in hospital. But what about people that don't have that and just come in with a sympathomimetic toxidrome? Those people can usually just be observed for four hours and they can be discharged, uh, providing their symptoms have resolved and providing they have no signs of end organ damage.